Bob Williams is the executive director of the Martinsburg Berkeley County Parks and Recreation uh, Department. He joins us in studio. Robert, good morning to you, sir. Good morning to you as well. How's the job going? Uh, how's the budget year now that we're post-COVID? Uh, it's been really good. It's nice to see people are coming back to our programs, and, and that's really significant, not only because we want to see people and kids uh, playing again and back back in building, uh, but it also helps us out uh, budget-wise to it allow us to, to pr- produce more services for, for folks in the community. Uh, you have uh, released a master plan, 2032 Growing Needs for a Growing Community. Let's talk about that, Bob. Yeah, we... Uh, a couple of years ago, the community came to the park board and said, you know, we, we really want to strengthen uh, your position in the community. We want to uh, really look at where where are you going with all this? You know, we've had a great legacy, but we also know we're a growing community. So where, where are you headed? And and that's where we really took uh, stock in, in that and uh, met with uh, Region 9 and some other folks uh, that said, you know, gave us some resources. We uh, facilitated this master plan document with Michael Baker International. It wasn't just us in-house doing this. Uh, to really look and listen to our stakeholders. So, yeah, we, we did a lot of listening sessions uh, in our community. We did a community survey trying to reach out to the people that aren't using us right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were very successful at that. We got about 1,700 responses, and we really thank our community for that. Uh, to tell us, you know, what would you like us to do with our existing facilities, and, and what would you want to see that maybe we're not doing right now? Um, so we're trying to grow on and build on that legacy we have, but know that, you know, we've got some more people coming in this community and we need to be prepared. Um, and, and the second half of this master plan is, you know, when we go to for funding uh, for, you know, donations and grants and things like that. Uh, you need a plan. You, you need to tell people, what are you going to use this for? What, who are you going to serve? And what, what are you going to use our money for? So this really shows in, in quite a bit of detail that we did our homework. You yeah. know, we, we looked at our community and listened to our community and said, you know, here, here's what we're laying out. And in a community like Berkeley County, where much of your revenue is user fee generated revenue mm-hmm. as opposed to government provided revenue, right. a master plan is only as good as the fees that you can generate and the funding that you can derive right, from it. Right, right. And, and that we looked at both programs and facilities in this master plan uh, because we, you know, the national average, and we base this on the National Recreation and Parks Association, and I've certainly worked at a couple of different park agencies, the national average for what we call generated revenue, you know, from fees and rentals and stuff like that, is about 23% right now. We're running at about 60%. Right. So we're trying to be more uh, financially sustainable, uh, be better stewards of, of the money that we do have uh, that is given through the grants or through local government entities. Uh, and I, th- I feel I think the community would be very proud about that that statistic. Take us through a couple of the broad strokes in terms of the wish list of the master plan. Uh, I know there are residents in the south end of the county and mm-hmm. the north who want their own parks. Oh yeah, and, and we've got some exciting things here uh, going on, not only with the plan but even in the works right now. And with this uh, master plan process, we were able to do two what we call design workshops. Uh, and that allowed us to look at two specific sites. We looked at Poor House uh, Farm Park. Uh, most people are familiar with that out uh, just west of the 81. And we also looked at um, what we're calling a, a new linear park connection. Uh, took looking at Oatsdale and a Lake Thomas or Memorial kind of linear park uh, connection. And this is really tying into the whole Frog Hollow Creekside Trail project that the city's doing right now. Uh, beyond that, and I'll get to those in a second, but beyond that, we also have two uh, major projects in the works right now. One uh, that the county has funded already is a, um, a new park development in Spring Mills, just off the interchange there to the west. Uh, it's a 10-acre parcel where we're putting in a couple of pavilions, playground, restrooms, and a walking trail. And in design right now, uh, working with the county uh, for a park in Inwood right across from Muslim High School. Uh, that'll complement that whole campus area down there. So we've got uh, a lot of things, two big projects in the works right now, and uh, some big things coming down the road. Uh, for uh, <clears throat> you heard me talk about, uh, excuse me a second, mm-hmm. uh, the Oatsdale Lake Thomas. For those of you who may not know, it means I know some uh, people in this uh, uh, community have uh, jumped the fence and maybe know what Lake Thomas is. It's the big quarry. I have. Yeah, I think I was going to say, there's a couple of folks I've run into that said, hey, I know what that is. <laughs> I've, I've been fishing in there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have done that. Uh, and then I've come across a lot of people that said, 
what, what's that? You know, it's, it's, it's that chain link fence mm-hmm. that, that you see with all that vegetation. We're going to clean that up. We're going to, on the north side by Baltimore Street, there's some great wooded area. We're going to create some trails, some uh, kind of an outdoor classroom type event and, and really connect uh, Oatsdale through Lake Thomas. I mean, it's a beautiful area just no one has access to and it's been like that for decades and uh, we're looking forward to the chance to get that open up and also to war memorial so you could go from war memorial uh all the way through oatsdale to connect the creekside trail take it down the roundhouse take the rock hollow trail to route nine keep on going so this is really going to open up trail networks which are people are asking for i mean in our, in our survey that's what people were looking for and so we're looking forward to uh, opening that up and we're working with the city right now on some grant opportunities to maybe uh, fund that that project in the in next year couple of years um, did you learn anything in the survey that really surprised you um not really. I mean, there's some, some old things that are still around. Uh, you know, the the interest in an uh, indoor f- aquatic facility is still there and pretty strong. Uh, and, and certainly we recognize that. We're trying to do some feasibility around that. I know some of our neighbors uh, to the east and north are doing feasibility studies right now around that. It's expensive. There's no question about it. Uh, if we would do that, it's, you know, on the neighborhood of 10 to 20 million to build it. And 800 to a million dollars a year to operate it. So we need a lot of partners and a solid business plan to make sure that if we're going to do this, you know, we got to do it right and make sure it's sustainable because we don't want it to be a burden on the community. We want it to be a, a real asset uh, for the community. Um, the other thing I think that I think most people might be surprised at is the uh, high interest in the number of people wanting more nature trails. You know, they, they want to get out and walk. They want to get out and bike. Uh, mentioned earlier before we came on about disc golf and mountain biking out of Poor House. That's just continuing to grow. Uh, and with our new 70 acres that we have out of Poor House, uh, we're going to be able to expand both of those uh, opportunities for mountain biking and disc golf, as well as uh, we're, we're right now developing some recreational trails, getting ready to add about two miles of uh, nature based trails uh, in the next month or so. Uh, out there to open that new area up to the public. So um, I I think people just want to get outside. I mean, it was the past couple of years when you couldn't go anywhere. Yes. Going outside, I mean, you went to to any of the parks. You went to War Memorial, you went to Poor House, any of the neighborhood parks. They they were packed. You know, just families hanging out, just, you know, throwing a Frisbee around, kicking a ball, uh, having a picnic, just being able to do something together with other people and, and that was nationally a trend. We certainly saw that locally, and, and we're so excited to see that. Matt Harvey is a frother, and uh, he has our <laughs> next question for you, Bob. <laughs> um, what, you know, I was looking at the master plan, and we mentioned you mentioned Lake Thomas. That really caught my interest because um, mm-hmm. would, would there be fishing allowed there? I mean, I know. I, I told you that I, the statute of limitations has already ran. Out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I figured you knew. Did you illegally fish there a couple times? Well, I had a valid fishing license, but I don't. I'm not sure I was supposed to be in there. But we won't, we won't evaluate that. But I wasn't. L- let me tell you, I'm, I wasn't the only one in there. Um, that is no excuse for breaking the law. Everybody else is speeding, officer. Why did you pull me over? Um, so, what considerations are given to potential economic development? It impact that new parks and expanded park systems and services to the community is is that something that's taken into consideration it, it sure is and and just talk about lake thomas for a second it's actually going to be phased in because we have to do environmental study programs you know we get it pretty on the land first the water is a second environmental study which is going to take a little more time more money uh, but that's one of the things that i promote certainly when we look at and talk about uh, recreation programming uh, and services is it does bring a lot of economic value uh, to the community, not only for uh, people wanting to work, live, and play in a community. There's reasons why they're attracted to certain communities. You know, and when I said talked about trails and, and uh, parks and other types of facilities, you know, we have the two outdoor pools, which are very popular in the summertime. Uh, we've got even our little mini golf courses you know, doing very well. Uh, we're looking to improve that because people are attracted to, to uh, activities like that. Uh, they don't want to come to a community where there's nothing for their kids to do or nothing for their family to do. Um, so we work closely with the, the Development Authority, the Chamber of Commerce, or members 
uh, and trying to work with them to say, what are people asking for uh, and include that in our planning. Uh, we don't do this in a vacuum. We, we want to make sure that we're collaborating with as many partners as possible uh, so that, you know, location-based, service-based, what are people asking for? We do a lot of listening uh, so that uh, the community uh, knows that we're hearing them and that we can provide those types of services for them that uh, they expect when they come to a community like ours. R River access, is that something that they're asking for? Uh, it is, uh, not as heavily as, as you might think, but I know that uh, the county is certainly exploring potential options uh, in those areas. And uh, I mean, we're this close to the Potomac and uh, even just getting in the like, Yopekin, uh, we're, we're in conversation with some state uh, properties that might become available to us in the future. Just even floating a, a tube down the water yeah. is just getting your feet wet, and, and even fishing uh, access is, is going to. We want to improve that. Is Sportsman's Paradise still an option on the table going forward? I know that's not a great place for boat access, for instance, but at, at least access. The to uh, the, water. Yeah, the county is looking at that. The challenge up there is is uh, just the road access coming right. in, and and so I know that they're exploring options right now. Uh, I'm not sure what those options are. Uh, but we have looked at, you know, what could that be once we get uh, access down there. And certainly water access, you won't get, uh, being that it's uh, pretty shallow on that stretch of the Potomac. Right. Uh, but you could get ca canoes and kayaks in there, more family-based opportunities. You know, mm -hmm. It makes a good day-use area, even potentially for some, uh, uh, maybe some overnight camping or something like that. So we're, we're looking at all options right now, but that's, uh, I think, going to be a few years down the road because of access. I have a few audience questions for you. Sure. Are you ready to field some of these in rapid-fire succession, sir? I'll try our best. From Jim Klein, I wonder if there have been plans to try to extend the season at Lambert Pool for the North End City kids, even if just one or two days a week. Can we keep that pool open until Labor Day for kids, not just swim teams and pay rentals? And play, uh, pay, oh, yeah, sure. Pay yeah, that's that's a good question. Uh, and it's always a challenge. And, and the challenge is, uh, for, for us, is staffing. Uh, you, you laugh like there's a, a national <coughs> lifeguard shortage. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're ver at our very limits of how many lifeguards we need each year. And, and uh, Lambert is uh, one of those pool areas where kids go back to school at, like, August 1. You know, we're looking right. to see if we can maybe get the first week in August open for uh, the kids. Uh, we still have uh, War Memorial as an option uh, later in, um, but we also are, you know, we have, we talked about earlier financial reasons, and, uh, you know, we're not seeing as many people come to our pools in August, to be mm -hmm. honest. Yeah, they're in school. They're in school or, or the they're college, going on vacation right before school. Right, and the, college, the lifeguards, <laughs> college kids have gone back to, to yeah, college. Right? It's it's a challenge for us. Damon Wright, will there be more open gym for adults to use the rec centers? South Berkeley will have hours from 3 to 5, I believe. Yeah, we just opened a, a, a new open gym uh, program down at the Randy Smith Recreation Center in Inwood. Uh, it's kind of a pilot program to see how that does. A, again, our challenge is staffing. Uh, you know, to make sure it's available at certain times. And the other challenge we have is just availability. Uh, with with our league programs, our, our gyms are packed a lot. I mean, you come in after school's open, and we've got either the schools using our rec centers, uh, and then we've got all the uh, different teams that are doing practices and stuff. But we're uh, we're, we're trying this out at uh, Inwood first, and, and if it's successful and we can get enough staffing resources to do um, Berkeley 2000 here in Martinsburg, we're going to attempt to do that as well. Doreen Schaffner, you need a large indoor pool and more senior programs. This one has gotten a couple of thumbs up and some hearts. <laughs> yeah, I don't disagree with that at all. I know our Silver Sneakers program for seniors has been successful, and we're looking at some potential other opportunities. And we talked about an indoor aquatic facility a little bit ago, and uh, it's certainly something I think we're going to take more seriously in the next couple of years as we look at feasibility of that and what the funding streams to not only build it, but also the business plan to maintain that going forward. David Anderson, when will Parks name the new East Burke Street Park? Uh, that's uh, sitting, at, as far as I know, with uh, City Council. Uh, to be honest, I haven't pulled that up for a while, so maybe I need to go back and revisit that. Uh, everybody's just calling it their East Burke Street Park right now, and uh, I know we've got a lot of kids out there playing basketball and just sitting down by the stream. Uh, I, so I know it's being used, but um, we don't have naming yet. Mm -hmm. So it's just that's what it is right now. And Rose does not have a question, more of a statement. The North End has nothing. Well, I'll ask the question, what's in the master plan for the North End? Bob? Well, uh, 
the two things I, I think right now, and both kind of centered around the uh, Spring Mills area right now. One is that new park we're developing. i uh, got a bid out right now on our website. That's going to close February 9th, so hopefully we can start construction later this winter, early spring, to develop that 10-acre park. So that'll bring some great opportunity for people to enjoy that. We're also looking at the DuPont Soccer Complex, which is right behind the high school up there in Spring Mills. Uh, right now it's just soccer, but we're, you know, we've got new townhomes right next to it. Uh, obviously a lot of growth there, and we're going to be looking at developing a master plan for that site so we can uh, meet the needs uh, of that growing community right there. Faith Hall, nothing has been improved at Rooney Park in 18 years. The sign was removed a year ago and still has not been replaced. Yeah, the sign was in disrepair. I know it's being repaired, and we've had some uh, difficulties getting that back. I have talked with the local uh, Little League groups and uh, – in fact, just approved yesterday, uh, they've received some donations to improve the dugouts, and I've received another uh, communication where they're going to look at improving the fields. Again, working with our community partners to get that done. We, we do that a lot. Uh, we don't. Um, we want to try to stretch our dollars as much as possible, and a lot of that's through community partnerships uh, and volunteers. When will the master plan be available to the public? It's on our website right now. Um, it was adopted in December, and if you go to our website, nbcparks-rec.org, uh, just go to the About up top, and you'll see a tab dedicated to our master plan. I've got a short video on there that talks about it, and the whole documentation and all the appendices are listed right there. Can you move some guards from War Memorial Park to Lambert Park to cover a day or two to get you to Labor Day? Uh, we, uh, it, it, we have minimum requirements for each of our pools. And uh, just by moving lifeguards, that doesn't necessarily meet minimum requirements at both sites. All right. You did pretty good there in rapid-fire succession. And while you're answering the questions, the audience numbers kept ticking northward. So there's clearly oh. a lot of interest in Parks and Rec information. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I'm yeah. excited about it. As well, you should be. You're in charge of it. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned townhouses a couple of minutes ago up by the, yeah. uh, the soccer facility. Yeah. With all of the development that's going on, mm -hmm. are we pressing builders? Are we pushing them for proffers to contribute to or build their own parks around their areas? I, I'm not involved in those conversations. I, I would certainly support those conversations. I've seen that done in other communities, uh, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. They, you know, some, sometimes you just put the minimum effort out there. Uh, but, you know, I think there are, you know, I've, I've been in a lot of communities. In this community, Berkeley County, Martinsburg, uh, has been very supportive of, you know, parks and recreation. They want to see areas where kids can play, where families can gather, uh, where their civic group can get together and do good things. Uh, and, you know, we want to continue to provide that. And, you know, we've seen lots of sponsors. We never have problems getting sponsors for our kids' sports teams. Uh, we don't have problems getting sponsors for, our, you know, things like our summer concert series. Uh, we've just had some great, great community support. And, and I think that's what's going to carry us through. What's the one thing you really need right now? Oh. One of the five things well, that you really one need the, right now. One of the big that? five things <laughs> is, you know, like everybody else, we need more time uh, to get everything done. Uh, and just, I, I think just better, you were try, always trying to get better communication, let people know what's going on. You know, I appreciate, you know, like you all uh, getting the word out about what's going on in our community from a lot of different levels. Uh, but we're just, we just want to get people out to the parks. You know, we've, like I said, we've got new trails coming. We've got a new park developing. We want to uh, share with you our new groundbreakings, and we want to get you out in the parks is, is really what we want is, you know, I talk to so many people that, you know, don't know the things we have, you know, like gymnastics, and we, um, you know, have a great dance program. We do uh, yoga, and we do other adult programs, and a lot of people don't aren't aware of that yet. So, And all of that is on your website? And all that's on the website. We've got a full catalog of all the activities. We've got some great videos that uh, we're working with a local company to – uh, promote more videos and, and, and on social media and our website. Um, so we're just, you know, just want to let people know, hey, we're here. We and if you got ideas, let me know. You know, I, I've got some great ideas that have come from the community, and we just want to continue that conversation. Ken Madsen asks, any news on a scoreboard for the hockey rink? Um, not right now. I uh, do know that we're trying to improve the site. We've those are built by the Capitals. Uh, and we're trying to communicate with them to see if they can help us improve uh, the site and uh, the equipment down there. And who knows, maybe we'll get uh, a scoreboard, but you know, those are typically sponsored. Uh, mm -hmm. All our other scoreboards are sponsored, and, and um, we just haven't had that yet. 
A couple of years ago, there was discussion of breaking up Berkeley County Parks and Rec into mm-hmm. a city Parks and Rec, a county Parks and Rec. Mm-hmm. Is that still an active discussion, Bob? It is not. Um, in, in, I think for a couple of reasons. One, we went through a strategic planning process, and now we have a master planning process that says, you know what, this is the best we can do for Berkeley County. Uh, when you break it up, you now need two different staffs, you two different boards. I think we have um, the benefit of saying not only when somebody calls us about a park in Berkeley County, we know it's ours mm-hmm. versus other uh, entities. And we use our resources the best we can, whether they're in town, whether they're in, the, in the county. Um, you don't need two separate entities to uh, to do all that. And I think we save a lot of money by, by providing that model. What did we miss today in terms of the master plan and anything else you needed to get across that we did not cover? Um, I think just the, the excitement um, around that we're trying to plan for the future. You know, we, we, a lot of people ask, why did you do a master plan? And, yeah, we, we need a plan to go after funding. You know, it seems like just a tool. Uh, but it's more than that. It's, you know, we have a great le- park legacy that's been built since uh, 1970. Uh, it's, it's gone through some, a lot of growth in recent years, and uh, we're just getting ready for the next uh, f- 40 and 50 years. So this, this helps us take that next step. So we're real excited about getting it off the ground and making sure that this is a great place to work, live, and play. It's not bad to have a former Parks and Rec director on the county council now, right? No, no, no never. <laughs> that doesn't hurt. <laughs> that, that doesn't hurt at all. And, and Bob, one more time, where can we find the master plan for Parks and Rec? You can go to our website at nbcparks-rec.org. Go to the About tab. Click on Master Plan. Hey, appreciate you coming by, man. Appreciate being here. It's been fun. Thank you very much. Bob Williams, director of Parks and Rec in Berkeley County.